<clears throat> All right, everybody out here on uh, Lower Broad today. This is our second day, my second day out here, the brothers out here. Uh, let's see, there's 10 of us out here this morning. So far, there was 11 of us last night. We're out here for the Country Music Awards Festival. Country Music Awards themselves are in fall. But today we're out here for the festival and for all the people. It's just another uh, reason for people to come out here and get drunk and worship their false idols of country music. So, but for us, it's just another crowd of sinners that need the Lord. So we're going to be out here all day. Uh, prayers are much appreciated that we don't get rained on too much and that uh, we are safe all day. Praise God. It's a little, a little after 11 o'clock right now, so we do see, still already see a lot of people around, but uh, hopefully they, they won't be drunk, they won't be too hungover, that they won't be able to hear and understand the gospel. Please pray that uh, the word of the Lord will fall on good ground and souls will be saved. Pride and Glory Tattoo Parlor. Pride and Glory. That's wicked. That's wicked. <laughs> I know, there. I saw a bunch of them last night over that way. See, see, they believe if they put in their hours for the Watchtower Society, that's what helps them get to heaven. That's why they come out and do it so regularly, they're convinced that that's how they get to heaven. Coming out and doing that. Handing out their literature. Right. Keep in mind, they're going to lower that thing and drive through there once in a while. Where are we going to start preaching? Right here? Or? Well, we're going to go up there a ways. Okay. Maybe like 4th Street. Wherever we can find a, a nice quieter spot. Right. There isn't as much background noise. I know a spot. Okay. It sounds like the music's coming from that way. It is, but that's from that's from Kid Rocks. We're going past Kid Rocks. Right. blade into all the world and preach the gospel.
lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, this man named Jesus, who died on the cross and rose again. He died for your sins. He paid the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. The Bible says, for he was wounded for our transgression. He was wounded for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. You can be healed, people. You can be healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. You people walking out here today are lost. You are lost. You are far from God. You are far from God. You don't have the true living God. You wear crosses on your neck, you drink alcohol, call yourself a Christian. Just like you, sir. You wear a cross on your neck, you drink alcohol, call yourself a Christian. The Bible says, be therefore sober. Sober. You need to be sober. Minded. Slaves of the watchtower. Slaves of the watchtower. You need to be sober minded, people. You need to stop worshiping and serving idols. You need to worship and serve the creator. That's who you lift up. You place them before God. That's why you're here. You put these people up on a pedestal. You know what? These country musicians, they don't care about you. They care about getting their pockets filled with money. And you know what? You're out here supporting it. So what are you doing? You're padding their pocket with money and they're laughing at you all the way to the bank. They're laughing at you all the way to the bank. Time to stop supporting idolatry. It's time to stop supporting fornication, sex outside of marriage. It's time to stop supporting homosexuality. It's time to stop supporting drunkenness. You people all put a bunch of revelers out here because all you want to do is party, get high, get drunk, get laid. That's what you're out here to do, most of you. 
not saying all of you are out here to do it, but most of you are out here to do that. How sad and sick is that? I'll say a good percentage of you are out here to do that. It's time to stop doing it. It's time to stop your sinning against the Holy God. The Bible says, Be ye perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. He said, Without holiness you won't see God. So yes, Jesus, He requires holiness. Jesus said, Repent! The kingdom of God is in hand. Repent! Or you all likewise perish. He said, as for many as I love, I refuse. He gets a hard refuse. I refuse and I chasten. He corrects. Be ye therefore zealous. And here's the word again. And repent. It's time to get right with Jesus. Thank you, sir. It's time to lift up Jesus, not your idol. It's time to stop lifting up sin and lift up righteousness found in Christ Jesus. Jesus can set you free. He can set you free and you'll be free indeed. What's your name? Well, you must know my friend Sorry, Kenneth already. Schreiner. He was standing here listening to the preacher. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We need to stop being uh, in, in the Masonic law of wicked devil. Wicked devils in the Masonic laws. Wicked devils in the Shriners. They're all a bunch of devils. They're all about work. Your works ain't going to save you, but Jesus Christ, He came to save the wicked soul. He came to set you free, set you free indeed. You can be found, you can be free in Christ Jesus, the Father in heaven. Then the Spirit, we can cry to have a Father in heaven where we are washed in the blood of Jesus and He's made us new, a new creation. But you have to be washed in the blood. You have to, you have to cry out to God for mercy. Because you, if you're living in your sin, you are condemned before a holy God. You are condemned before a holy God if you're living in your sin. Don't believe what the Jehovah Witnesses believe down the road. They, they don't believe Jesus is God. But we believe Jesus is God. He's God in the flesh. He came like you and me so that He can be that propitiation between God and man. God. You're condemned before God. What's that? It's He's preaching the Bible, the, the gospel, of this life. salvation and damnation. You know about those things? Yeah. Is it just like judging people? Did you know that the Bible says Christians are commanded to judge people? Did you know that? And in uh, Luke 6.37, it says actually do not judge or do not condemn. Really? Yes. Let's take a look. Right, let's take a look. Luke 6.37. Do you know the other verses that tell, tell us to judge? Or you just know that one verse? I don't know the whole Bible. My dad's a pastor. I've been in the church for years. Really? Yes, but this is going to, all you're going to do is stare around people from church. This is extreme Christianity. Well, if your pastor didn't teach you over all those years that you need to judge, you, you wasted your time. I don't waste my time. It says, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Right Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Yeah, what Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. 
So we're here meeting out the word of God. Have you, have you ever read Matthew chapter seven? Right. Yes, yes, yes. You admit you're judging. It says judge not, you're going to be judged. Right. He's talking about hypocritical judgment. Did you know that? This is hypocritical. Okay. What's that? Why are you judging people? Well, you're, you're, not, well, you're not the creator. <laughs> It says right here in uh, Matthew chapter 7. Well, what I say, Luke 6, 37. It's a, right, I just read that, you remember? Yes, and you, told okay. me, you took it and you committed your own words. And you're judging other people. Right, so we're supposed to judge. No, you're not. It says right here. Well, we'll see what you think of this. You tell me what you think of this. Jesus said, Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote of thy, thy, thy brother's eye. You know he's talking about sin, right? The beam of sin or the mode of sin in your eye? Okay. So you cast, you get the sin out of your own life, and then you help your brother get his sin out of his life. Well, I don't have the sin of drunkenness anymore. So, so you're out here. Do you have the sin of drunkenness? You don't have any sin at all. I, I can sin, but but I don't love sin anymore. No, no, no one loves sin. No one wants to sin. Oh yeah, they do. They tell me that all the time. The homos love their homosexuality, don't they? I don't yeah, know. yeah, they have a whole parade. Okay. Have you seen their gay pride parades? I don't go to those. Have you ever heard of them? Yes, gay pride parade? Yeah, they're celebrating their sin. But, but the point is that you said nobody loves sin, and I just pointed out the fact that the homosexuals, homosexuals celebrate their sin, right? So you judge the people that's sin? No, we are commanded to judge. Jesus said, and... Uh, you read it, and it's literally what I just told you. You're not judged. So are you telling me we're wrong? Yes, according to the Bible. You're then right. that's a judgment. You should stop judging them. What are you doing right now? If you tell us we're wrong. What are you doing right now? I'm saying the judgment is what we're well, supposed what are you doing? to be doing. Jesus said don't judge anyone. And what are you doing? Okay, right now? but you're judging me. You're judging us. I'm literally asking you what the Bible verse says, and right. you're gonna get offended by it because you're wrong. But you, but you said we're wrong. Do you think we're wrong? According to the Bible. You just read it to me and trying to come uh, Okay. So me. so you say it's wrong to judge. According to the Bible, correct? Right? Well, that's, I'm just See, trying to clarify your see, position. You can't win this battle because literally you read it and then you read you, another verse that literally says. So you say it's wrong to judge? According to the Bible. Okay. So do you obey the Bible? Yes. I try to. Okay. But, I, but you're saying, telling us we're wrong. Saying. I know this. People are saying that's why we have Jesus' forgiveness. That's why he died on the cross. Because we have forgiveness and sin. What you do right now, you're judging people. So you, wrong. you say it's okay to sin? I'm not saying it's okay to sin. People try to fight that. That's why, that, that's why Jesus died on the cross. Why? Why did he die so on the cross? So we can, our sins are forgiven because we are going to be sinners. We're fallen. We're fallen after Adam and Eve. After Adam ate the apple, we are fallen. We're in sin. So are you saying that everybody's sin is forgiven? Yes. If they believe in Jesus Christ, they're forgiven. But what you're doing right now is actually a sin because you're judging. Because what the Bible verse just said is do not judge. Did you? And literally you just pulled another Bible verse that says do not judge. And you're asking me if I feel like you're... Pull another Bible verse. Okay. Right here in... Uh, this is Paul the Apostle writing to Christians. Okay. It says, this is 1 Corinthians uh, 2.14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So if you're a born-again Christian and you have the mind of Christ, we are commanded to judge. I'm not trying to argue. I'm saying if you're a born-again Christian, you still have sin. It doesn't we, mean you're we without could sin. sin. You're not without sin. You're still a human. You're a human flesh. Until right. you die and you rise. But you're changing the subject. Do you realize that? You changed it a long time ago. <laughs> well, you came up talking about judgment. The first, I, I, the first I, I, thing you addressed. I said what is supposed to be uh, six thirty-seven. So. Right, and the subject was about judging. Okay, so let's talk about judgment. Yes. That's what I've been trying to stick to. Yeah. But you've been trying to change it to something else. No, I'm, okay. I'm good with it. Judgment. But I'm saying, what is Luke's... Okay, so you, say, so, so you say judging people is okay out here then? So no, you've changed your position? I say that once. Oh, okay. 637, 30 says, do not judge. We have to are take you, it in context. Are you without sin? 
I can sin. I sin sometimes. I do. Okay, you sin sometimes. But just because you see people drunk out here and it's not your sin, why are you going to judge them? How about they found your sin in your life because, and they came to you and started yelling at you? Because of the, well, if one of my brothers, if a born-again Christian... Why does that have to be? How do we know they're born again? All we know is you have a camera. You, have a, you keep asking me questions and you don't to, listen for the an answer. You keep asking me questions, but you don't let me you answer. Think people are actually going to come to Christ this way? Can I answer? No, do you, well, honestly, if someone came to you and started making fun of you, like, oh, that's a stupid hat, that's a stupid hat, oh, yeah. well, and they started mocking you, do you think right. you're going to join their club or whatever? You're not going to join it because you're, all you're doing is mocking people and breaking them down. And they're going to look at you, they're going to pick you up. I'm a Christian. I was born a Christian. No, okay. you're not. I'm not a Christian. I'm not no. a Christian. Oh, so you're a judge. You're a creator. You're Jesus. You're Jesus? That's crazy because you just judge me right now. You just, right. Your whole thing just went to the You defamed your whole self right now. Right. You're not a Christian. How am I not? Because you don't you don't appreciate the preaching of the Word of God. I don't appreciate you judging people that you don't you don't you don't know these people. You're not God. You don't know their life. See, your problem is you don't appreciate so, us. So if I don't appreciate people, I'm not a Christian. So no, that's no, not, it's the Word of God you don't appreciate. You, it's see, God's Word. The so God you you claim to people, serve. How many people have you stared away from God right now? How many have we steered away from God? They're, almost all of them are away from God already. Okay. We can't steer them how away from God. How are you helping? Telling them the word of God. Because he's literally, everybody is literally cussing them, put them off, but, whatever. But unfortunately... You know, me, I'm not a Christian. I've born and raised a Christian for the last 29 years. Nobody's born Christian. a Christian. If you say you're born a Christian, you don't know what Christianity is. Okay, and you do, because you're out here with your fucking... No, no, because I own a book. Oh, you own a book? Because I, I understand the oh. book. So and you're standing here with filthy... Uh, Baba, you're a Christian. You know Did you know the Bible says to have no filthy yeah, communication coming out of your, your mouth? Because he owns a book, he's a Christian. Right. I'm not a Christian. Well, it's because I believe the book no, and I obey the book. I have repented towards God and put my faith in Jesus Christ. Did you know that the Bible... You know what the Bible says about how a woman should dress? What's that? See, there see, you go. Yeah, see, see, the Bible says they have no you're filthy there. communication coming out of your mouth. You do see your people. Did you know that? Y'all are the reason that people don't go to church. Yeah. Well, most churches are just pagan temples. So you know that, right? Most of people, that makes it really quick. You guys are making it miserable. Like, I'd rather go get shot at again than listen to you on it. Because you're, you're, you're the biggest prophecy. So, so, so why do you keep talking to me then? Because you have not answered my question about six, Luke 6, three, uh, 37. Right. About judging people. Right. And that was, do you know how to study the Bible? The Bible says to study precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Where does it say that in the Bible? That is in the book of Deuteronomy. Okay. Yeah, so that's how you're supposed to study it. So when you, you want to understand judge. judgment, you can't just take half a verse like you did. Okay, that's how that's how the devil. Six thirty seven. Six thirty seven. What does it say? Do not judge. That's the whole verse. You read it a second ago. Right. Exactly. So if you want to understand judgment in Scripture, you need to take to, take together at least several verses that talk about judgment in order to understand it. But if you just take a verse out of context, do not judge. Well, you could go in here with a, you could read in the Bible where it says there is no God. I'm a Christian, not according to him, but. More people will actually be a Muslim at the end of the day. Yeah, because you got filthy communication coming out of your mouth. You know, the Bible says not to have that, right? Oh, okay. You know, Jesus said, the over, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, because you have a Jesus heart said, full of cursing. Jesus is my Savior, right? Jesus said, no, he's not your Savior. See, he's not my Savior. Has it? And you're a judge now, right? Right. But it says not judge. It's 637. Again, you're wrong. Okay. Right. In your half a verse out of context, sure. How's the, how's the verse out of context? Sure. It literally says, do not judge or you. You, you will be judged. Right, like I said. You, out of context. What are you doing? You're judging. Yeah. See, and you have no did, rebuttal for this. Did you know the Bible and says? You're, you're going to, you know the Bible says you can get all crunched up because you have nothing, none of your buddies are going out. You have nothing to say about this. Did you know you that the Bible says it is a folly and a shame unto him that answers the matter before he hears it? I keep trying to give you answers, but it is a folly and a shame unto you because We've you won't listen to the answer. We know what you all are all about. The other you said you had sin, but yet you're judging other people's sin. So what do you do? Do not sin, or yet you will be sin, or you will be judged. Whatever. You know, Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yes. Okay. And you see missionaries do it all the time. My dad was a missionary for years. Probably not because you're going to say he's not because you read the future and stuff. But whatever. Oh uh, no. Yeah, Again, more false accusations. I don't know your dad. Oh, but you know, you know about Christian sure or not, right? Would your dad come out here and stop, start dropping f bombs on me? You, Would he? You know I'm a Christian, right? What's that? You know I'm a Christian. 
You say you are. But you just told me I'm not. Well, if you got filthy community. Right? See? A You're folly gay. and a shame. He answers a matter he answers a matter He's before gay. he hears She's it. Gay. She's gay too. I'm gay too. Because I said it, so it makes it true. But oh well you could be a liar. People do lie. No, I can tell you Did you know the Bible? The, the Bible says that no, God sure hates liars. Did you know the Bible says God hates liars? Who did, so, but who did Jesus get the most mad at in the scripture, though? The Pharisees. No. What's it? No? The whitewashed temple curse and all that? Yeah, he did they're rebuke them the quite harshly. They're clean yeah. on the inside. They're like two dead people. What's the difference between y'all and the Pharisees? I'm like, well, do you, do you know what Jesus said the problem with the Pharisees was? Why he was rebuking them? Because they lifted up the traditions of men over the word of God, making it of none effect. But they were they were the religious ones that were judging everyone for everything they did and stoning. But, but what were they doing wrong? Not stoning people for having No, what did Jesus say they did wrong? They were having they had spiritual pride. What they did is they took the, the traditions of man and put them over the Word of God, more important than the Word of God. We are just simply preaching the Word of God. We're, we're not to, small parts of it. We're not trying to preach. This is preaching small parts of it. This is preaching him literally saying you're going to hell. Are you a better preacher? I'm not a preacher. I'm asking you. I'm literally asking a question. So, so you're disobedient. Are you not? We're all disobedient. We're Je all of Jesus sin. said to go into all the world and what? We're all of sin. Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel. If you're a Christian and you're not doing it, you are so disobedient. You school, someone tries to teach you two plus two, and they say you're a moron because you don't know what this is. You think that kid's going to learn, or they're going to actually learn it when the teacher breaks it down how to do two plus two? Because what you're doing right now is steering people away from Christ. Well, see, people already know that sin is wrong. Okay, you, you, because you just told me people don't know about sin before. You just told me no, that's like, yeah, I said that they sin, love you know, sin. They love sin. That's the problem is that they love sin. That's what I said. See, the Bible says that God gave every man a conscience. The word conscience means with knowledge, not science, with knowledge. Everyone has knowledge that their sin is wrong, but they do it anyway. So we don't, people aren't ignorant that drunkenness is wrong. People are not ignorant that fornicating with strangers is wrong. People are not unaware that lying is wrong. They know that already. And we're telling them what that lifestyle will lead them to. Do you know what living, living like that and dying like that will lead to? Why would you just pass on a pamphlet, hey, if you want to go to Christ, if you want to come to this church and that? Do you know what living in sin and dying in your sin will lead to? No. Exactly. Yeah. So you, it's currently I'm going there, you're definitely going there. Do you know most of these people are headed to hell? Do you know Jesus said most of these so people are going to hell? So all of us are going to hell, right? Well, we all deserve it. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, well, let's see if we can find something else we agree on. Jesus said that most people are going to hell. Do you agree with that? I, I just told you I agree with that. Yeah, right here. Okay. So are you, does that concern you that most of these people are going to hell? Absolutely. I have tons of friends that are going to hell. Okay, so what are you doing about it? So what are you doing about it? You can't change them, but have you told them the truth? Have you told them they're going to hell for their sin? 100%. I talk to them all the time. They right. hang out with me. They see you. I'm a fucking... Yeah, I, I cuss. I'm sorry. I'm in the military. Yeah. We see people get blown up. I was in the military for 20 years. I don't have filthy communication coming out of my yeah, mouth. Sure, okay. You can make all the excuses you want, but they're not going to hold up on Judgment Day. That's fine. God's not going to buy I, it. I know my sin. That's Jesus is going to say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. So, 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 hey, when you were our age, what were you like? Were you doing all this? I was a drunken foreigner. I would have loved this. Okay, right. I would have been going from honky-tonk to honky-tonk, looking for a horn to get laid okay, with. So, so That's so what I would have been doing. I'm pretty sure I'm worse so than you guys. So you have sin. So you have sin. So you sin. Well, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah, you have sin. You just you submit it. You have sin. So you're just like everyone else out here. You have sin. Not anymore. Not anymore. I have, I have been born again. When I put my faith in Jesus Christ as death, burial, and resurrection, and repented toward God in grief and godly... How did you get to that point, though? You just, I was just telling you. No, but like, okay, like, like, when I put my faith in Jesus Christ as death, burial, and resurrection, but and I repent it towards like God, see, so you don't care about no, salvation. No, no, no. You don't out, care. Out, like, were, were you walking out? Church yeah, doesn't yeah, save you. I want to know the story, though. Like, was it these people, and you're like, oh my gosh, like, 
this is love and this is what I, you know, now I love Jesus and here's my heart for Jesus. Well, so people yelling at you and telling you you're no, going to hell. That's what I'm saying. I'm so no, no, that's not what happened. Okay, so what happened? Yeah, are you asking me how, how I came to come out here and preach the Bible? No, I'm asking how did you, you come to Jesus. Were like us. How did I get saved? Yes. Yes. I heard the gospel. I heard the Bible read. I realized I was in a church building. Church, church building, not here. I wasn't here. Yeah, and you just admitted to us, this is not the right way. No, God can do it anyway. He can do it. He can save somebody in a church building. What if he, he can save somebody here, to to here out on Lower Broad. He can save somebody anywhere. Don't, don't put God in a box. Put All right, this is the easiest thing. You have alcoholics outside, right? You have people drinking. People are drunk. Oh, yeah, and there's people out here that do drugs, too. Okay, yes. Do you know that? Yes. And, and there's, there's, and there's love, prostitutes okay, out here. Okay, that's great. Yeah. They love alcohol. They love drugs. They love whatever. They should be drawn to certain things. This is steering away alcoholics and drugs, which should music it draws people in. Why wouldn't you all have Christian music? Why wouldn't you have something like a pamphlet to draw people? If you're steering away people that are clearly out of their mind on drugs and stuff, here's a pamphlet to draw people in. Would you like one? Yes, but him right there yelling at people saying they're going to hell, and you're making alcoholics want to go the opposite way. Alcoholics are the most friendly people, unless like somehow there's a fight. Usually they're the most friendly, friendly people. Well, of course they are. Okay. Of they're course they are. They're headed away. to hell. And the devil's very friendly. The devil's very friendly. Well, we can be. I'm being friendly to you. I'm not. I'm not cussing at you. You're judging what I'm wearing. Yeah, yeah. We're commanded to judge. That's how we started the conversation. We're commanded to judge. Don't judge. Judge not, lest you be judged. Thank you. Right, well, keep going. Don't take it out of context like the devil. Keep going all the way down to verse 5. Where's all the love that y'all, like the scripture is, God is love, right? Well, we were talking about Matthew chapter 7 before. You know the Sermon on the Mount, right? The Sermon on the Mount, three whole chapters. You, you know how many how many times Jesus mentioned love in the Sermon on the, sermon on the Mount? Matthew, all those three chapters? Zero. So now you're taking that out of Do you know how you know how you know how many times that the Bible says that I love you from God? God says he loves us? None. Not what? So love the world. No, that's not what all about. Right, look, past tense. He demonstrated his love by having his only begotten son die on the cross. God so loved the world. That was the that was the demonstration of love. Well, if you are a born again Christian, yes he loves you. But if you are a sinner, so, but you just sort of, I'll show you. You, you want to hear it? Yeah. I'm so confused. No, the only, you know, he only loves the people that are saved. <laughs> According to his definition, so like we're saved. Yeah. See, it says right here in the uh, book of Proverbs, you've read Proverbs before, right? Proverbs 6.16, it says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Are you Are you in the ministry or you just know? My dad, I grew up in like my dad's in that ministry for the last Well, you can't ride your dad's coattails to heaven. Did you know that? We're introducing ourselves. <laughs> So we can't make our introduction. Like, what was your dad doing? What did your dad do? Well, he died in his sin and he went to hell at the end of his life. He was a cigarette sucking, beer guzzling yeah, sinner. See, you're giving yeah. me way too much. I asked what his career was. And his career? Well, he, he ran a winery. Yeah. He went or, ran a winery and uh, he worked at a place called Sylvania, an electronics factory back in the 70s. I can't judge him. I don't know him. I know him. You know him. Better than God knows him. Better than God knows his heart. Well, we're commanded to judge people by their fruits. All of Matthew 7. Yeah. Are you looking at the King James Bible? So, King James is bad, or? What's that? What, 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 what verse is that? Yeah, the King James Bible, that's the perfect one. That's the perfect one. Oh, okay, okay. Right, because when God creates something, the devil counterfeits and corrupts so it, right? the Bible in the King James Version? Well, that's when he brought it all together in one book. Did you know it was never all brought together before before the, fifth, the 15th century? Well, King, it, it was under his name. It was originally um, called the Authorized Version. He had 47 translators, over 47 translators. Did you know that? What did he translate from? Because whatever he translated from, over, it over, the original. Over 5,000 ancient manuscripts that have that have providence. So I would guess to find out if you're truly of the faith. What's that? I would guess those would be the original. Well, no, God doesn't preserve the originals. How do you, you, know, realize how that? you know what God does? Well, by reading it in his book. Yeah, by reading it in his book. You remember, do you remember what happened to the original Ten Commandments? I'm answering your question. You, you asked, we were talking about the originals, right? You, you think I'm changing the subject because you won't listen to my answer. 
Where are you? We're going to go on for a long time. What's up? Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Seven one. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. The rambler, the gambler, the backbiter. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And, a lot of loose women. and with and what a lot measure of ye meet, sin. it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. For how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. See the beam. Kind of different. Johnny Cash. Two drugs. He's Christian, right? No, he wasn't a Christian. He was Christian. Then why is he singing Johnny Cash right now? Many of you. That's not wrong. Yeah, yeah. He's mocking. He's mocking Johnny Cash. He's mocking Johnny Cash. Yeah. Some, sometimes we do song rewrites out here. That's okay to mock people. That's what you said. Yeah. Now it's okay to mock people. Did you know that some of the prophets mo not mock people in the Bible? Did you know that Jesus so mocked people in the Bible? Prophets, though. You're a prophet now. Are you do, you, do you know what it means to be a prophet? God will cut you yeah, you're chosen by God. No, that means, that means you speak the word of God to people. That's all it means. If you're going to prophesy, all you do is speak the word of God. That's what, that's what prophecy is. Right. So we're coming up to you and say, Luke 6, 37, I'm a prophet now. You didn't even quote the verse. You can't even quote the whole verse. How can you prophesy? Well, you know what's funny? Because right after he stopped, right after he stopped for you, he said, I think, verse 7 or 8, no one cash of pearls from her sweat unless they've been trampled on her foot. Did you notice why I stopped? Did you notice why I stopped reading? Because we're all split. Because he started talking again. He won't listen to the answer. No, but listen, so, but we're all swine if we're going to God, so what are you throwing answers for? You're all what? If we're all swine and going to hell, then what? That, that's an awful judgmental thing to say. I, I didn't call you swine. Well, a lot of people out here, out here are pigs and dogs. They are. Well, there it is. So but they can still, but they can still be saved. They can still be saved. You know, whatever else well, see, the thing about here, the crowd is always changing. The crowd is always changing. We'll preach to thousands of people today. Now, you reach that in which way? Like, have you ever, like, like sin? What's that? Really, I wonder what the success rate is. Like, have y'all have, have ever had someone, like... It's it's uh, pretty close to 100%. Really? Yeah. Well, that's, that's just one. That's not a real life. People are walking by, flipping right. you off. That's not 100%. Not, not well, well, wait a minute. Define what's the goal. You said success rate. You didn't even define what success is. Like if people ever come up to you and like, like, thank you for doing this. Like, Sometimes I'd say about one percent might do that, but that's not. But that's not. If that's your success, then I then I understand why you don't obey the Lord and go out and preach the gospel. Like, clearly, he asked a question and now you want to judge him for no reason. Oh, I understand why you wear the hat. You must be. Are, are you saying? Are you saying I'm wrong? What? No, I worked at church. I'm saying that you're really judging people. Right, we're supposed to. No, we're not. Okay, then don't tell me I'm wrong. You better not. That's a judgment. If you think judgment is wrong, you better not tell me I'm wrong. He's going to help. Then you're a hypocrite. So you're a hypocrite. See, and you're correct. It said, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and return again to, and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. See, I can't even complete a Bible verse. And this one who says he loves the God of the Bible, he always has to talk while I'm reading. He always has to talk while I'm reading it. You can do whatever you want. I'm just saying, if you love God, you'd love the reading of His Word. Okay. I love working out. It doesn't mean I'm going to work out all the time. But if I don't work out all the time, that means I'm fat. If you went to the gym, did two push-ups, and then went and did, did something else, and then you ran for three and a half minutes on the treadmill, and then went and did something else, people would start to wonder if you really like to work out. Well, the Bible commands us to judge. You want me to read those verses to you one more time? Matthew 7, 24, where Jesus said to do what? Matthew 7, 24. Right, that was for the hypocrites. That was the hypocrites should not judge. 
right? Judge, what, what are you? Right, and then down to verse 5, it says... same standard of measurement, it'll be measured to you. So the way that you treat these people, us... Right, if I was going out and getting drunk... Doesn't not worry you at all, so now you're getting to the judgment seat of Christ. You used to you judges you by the same measure that you've been judging these people, us. Does that not worry you? Right, if I was if I was getting drunk, if I got done preaching today and went home and guzzled down some Jack Daniels, I would be a hypocrite and I should be in fear. Okay? But, but the Lord has helped me to not be, for example, a drunkard anymore, to stay away from alcohol. So I have no fear about uh, preaching against drunkenness. I preach against pornography because the Lord has given me freedom from pornography. I'm not going to go home and look at that dirty pornography. And so, so, there, so I have no fear about preaching against those sins and many others that the Lord has freed me from. I could sin. There are some sins I could commit. Sometimes I can be prideful. Sometimes, but I have to repent towards God with a broken heart. But most people today, they, they just love their sin. Okay. Yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I can be prideful. Sometimes I can have uh, hateful thoughts before people. You know, but I take those before the Lord. No, I haven't had any hateful thoughts toward any of you. So, it just yeah. seems you're coming across that you know, there's, a, there's a reason why I speak directly, okay? When I encounter people on the street, I'm probably going to talk to I'm, This is a long time to talk to people for me. Usually I talk to them for a few seconds, and i got a, a very small amount of time to get the ideas of God into them. Usually they never stop walking. A lot of people never raised in the Christian family, even though they're going to hell, but we actually know about the Bible, and now we're asking you questions, and you don't have actually a real answer. I don't know. I'm just telling you what the Bible you say says. I did not say that. I did not say that. I didn't say that either. There, you get back to what you said earlier. What is our purpose out here? We're out here to to deliver a message, to deliver the gospel to people, and what they do. We're out here to deliver the gospel to people, and what they do with that information is between them and God. Because I don't see any of that. Jesus died for you because he loves you. I don't see anything about Jesus loving you. Right. The Bible doesn't really say anything about that. He died on the cross. God is love. The Bible doesn't say that. Oh yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Where is it? The bar, the well, 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 let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Maybe the King James tells us God art love or something. Art, art is plural. Right. Yeah, the these, the thous. Why? They're important. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm in. I'm in teaching mode all the time. I, I can tell. I can tell. I like to be in grace mode. I like to live in grace. Well, grace will lead you away from sin. Did you know that? Yeah. But by the grace of God, men can depart from sin. But do nothing about it. I would implore you to actually do something. Do you think God is merciful or no? He's merciful to, towards them that repent and put their faith in Jesus Christ. Otherwise, everybody's going to get their wrath and it, his wrath and indignation on them on judgment day. So, can you pull up God's love? My phone is every What is it? Literally, God is by permission of the local church. No, this is this should be normal Christianity. Standing around talking about the Bible. This is what normal Christians should be doing. But then we would be taking it out of context, but what they do with this stuff is not out of context. Well, here's one that comes up when I search for is love God. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not greedy. That's a, that's a good love verse. 1 John 4.16, I think that's what you're talking about. 
let me get it in context here. First John 4.16. Uh, let's start in verse 12. We don't want to take things out of context, right? That's the wrong thing to do, take things out of context. So, so, so let's go in First John. We'll start in 4.12. It says, No man hath seen God at any time. If we want love one another, if we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know... What? What? Um, you started in verse 12? Yes. What does verse 8 say? We can start at the beginning of the chapter. No, but what does verse 8 say? Though? Verse 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. There it is. There it is. Wait a minute, see? Now who's taking it out? I'm trying to read the no, context. You said but you say there it is. No. You get that whole part. You said nowhere in Scripture. Right, because right, that's the beginning of a paragraph. Well, that's 12 is the beginning of a paragraph. All right, let me read it. No man hath seen God at any time. Sorry, if we love one another, yeah, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby we know that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit. And we, having seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God dwelleth in him, and he is God. So let me ask you a question. Do you believe that that is all God is, is what? That's pretty good. Well, I think God is 100% love, but I think He doesn't think it's well. Now, there are a lot of things that are involved in love. That's true, too. Love can be discipline. Love can be judgment. Love can be a lot of different things. Oh, see, but I'm loving said, people judgment. You said that Scripture does not say God is love, and that is exactly what it says. I was wrong. I was wrong. That's why we pulled it up. That's why why we do what we call extreme Christianity. We look stuff up because we don't want to be wrong. Right. We can be wrong, but the Bible but, is always right. So I right, but you're saying that we don't know Scripture, but you were just wrong about it. I never said that you didn't. You literally said we're all going to hell. We don't believe in the God. I never said you all were going to hell. You literally told me I'm going to hell. You said you are not all God. I you're said, going to hell. You yeah. said you're a Christian. And I said, oh yeah. Me, me, my dad being a Christian, you're like, well, you can't uh, piggyback off your dad. It's like, I'm not. I'm saying, you let me finish my sentence. My dad being a Christian, I've been raised in the church and I believe in Christ. And you said, you're going to hell. I'm like, all right, cool. I guess we're all going to hell. I guess we'll see you there. I'm also black and they're gay. Do you know you can't see anything in hell? Oh, you've been there. And he's been there too. <laughs> see, again, see, see the mocking spirit. No, I just know the Bible. Uh, Y'all mocked him. Oh, what do you know? You literally just mocked Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Yeah, you literally said, we're mocking him. It's okay to mock Johnny Cash. It's not okay to mock scripture. I'm mocking you. Right. Well, you can if you want, but the Bible says it's dark down there. Did you know that? It will mock you. Je Jesus that, said it is utter darkness. So well, you're not going to see anybody in hell. That's my point. Jesus said it is utter darkness. You're not going to see anybody there.
majority of women did not want to know. Because they knew it was a man's world. They knew all that was a man's world. But men, step up to the plate. I know the women won't like this message. But men, step up. Stop being little babies and let your ladies feel over here. Stop letting Jezebel rise up. I mean, 